Through many windows in the soul, you'll see Aboriginality. This place was being built for a century. The child of the goddess and the grizzly. To find you is to reclaim destiny. We must travel the tomb. Without you, there is great loneliness. Nowhere to live, nowhere for to be. Grizzlies walking upright. Grizzlies walking upright. The largest roadless forest in the lower 48 states is under siege by the United States Forest Service. The Nez Perce National Forest unleashed the biggest timber sale in the history of the Northern Rockies. This six-year project involves punching in 145 miles of new roads and removing 81 million board feet of timber, enough to fill 26,000 log trucks. A campaign has emerged to protect the Cove Mallard roadless areas core habitat within the greater Salmon Selway ecosystem in central Idaho. Cove Mallard is the unprotected link between the River of No Return, the Gospel Hump, and the Selway Bitterroot Wilderness areas. Cove Mallard area is within the heart of the greater Salmon Selway ecosystem. In fact, it's within the, the central core of the ecosystem that harbors the largest remaining tract of virgin forest left in the 48 states. Uh, by the largest tract of virgin forest, I mean the, the largest area of intact primary forest that's never been logged. It's a huge area. Uh, it's, it's absolutely tremendous. The Greater Salmon Selway encompasses about, uh, I believe it's uh, 40,000 square miles or an area about the size of the state of Ohio. Uh, about 11 million acres of unprotected national forest wildlands are within the Salmon Selway. 20% of all of the unprotected wildlands remaining in the national forest system. The topography of the Salmon Selway is complex. Vertical relief is great, and local climates vary radically. This diverse jumble of climates, soils, aspects, and topography creates a diverse mosaic of biotic communities that is unsurpassed in temperate North America. Here is the big wild, the sprawling sea of unbroken coniferous forest, broken occasionally by grassy river breaks, streams, meadows, avalanche paths, outcrops, and talus, draped over the contorted landscape. This remote green blanket hosts an exceptionally rich mid-elevation tempered forest ecosystem of lodgepole pine, subalpine, Douglas, and grand fir on the ridge lines western larch and Engelmann spruce in the wetter draws, and, as you descend down into the salmon breaks, huge ancient ponderosa pine. These montane forest communities contain an array of habitats, ranging from wet meadow complexes to grassy parklands to densely forested summits. Here the Idaho Rockies are truly a wildlife paradise and harbor the last strongholds of wolverine, fisher, pine marten, lynx, moose, mountain lion, black bear, harlequin duck, boil and flammulated owls, goshawk, steelhead, and bull trout. The three most critically endangered species that are missing from the ecosystem are the grizzly bear, the gray wolf, and the Chinook salmon. Uh, the, the potential for restoring populations of, of the big predators that are at the top of the food chain, like grizzly bear and, and gray wolf, uh, is, is probably the best potential of any wildland ecosystem that we have left.
200 clear cuts are planned in Cove Mallard's nine major drainages. At the end of 1991, after all administrative appeals were dismissed, the Forest Service started building 145 miles of logging roads to access the timber sales. Two and a half years later, 18 and a half miles of road have been completed in the Grouse and Noble Creek drainages, and the Grouse timber sale has been logged. The Noble timber sale is scheduled to be cut in the summer of 1994. This culvert is half buried by the sediment. Sediment which is coming from this road cut, which as you can see has completely collapsed into the stream bed. Look at how deep this is. It's just sand that washes down off the surface and eventually into Noble Creek, which is probably bull trout habitat. Due to intensive road building and logging within Cove Mallard, the fate of the Chinook salmon, steelhead, bull trout, and West Slope cutthroat trout are in jeopardy of extinction. Water quality is essential to maintaining healthy fish populations. Forest communities are not only threatened by fragmentation from roads, but also from regeneration failures. Due to the Idaho batholith, a granitic formation which produces steep topography and fragile soils, trees grow very slowly here. In fact, it's an evolutionary miracle a forest can grow in such conditions. The Cove Mallard timber sales are a prescription for disaster. Oftentimes, particularly in the habitat that's being logged in the Cove Mallard area, uh, a nine or 10 inch lodgepole pine, nine or 10 inch diameter lodgepole pine might be close to a century old. Uh, a lot of these sites aren't gonna regenerate, but even when clear cutting occurs in a place where the regeneration of trees follows, uh, what we don't have is the regeneration of a complex, diverse, evolving native forest. Uh, in places, yes, we can grow trees back, but what we're doing on a wholesale level, uh, not just in the Cove Mallard area, although that's emblematic of the problem, but on a nationwide basis throughout the national forest system, is converting diverse, a structurally complex native forest to simplify tree farms. When you take out all the standing timber and, and ship it to the mill, uh, when you pile the remaining slash and burn it, uh, when you're left with a, you're, you're left with a, a sterile landscape of uh, smooth ground and some grasses and forbs and, and rows of, of little trees of the preferred uh, commercially desirable species, uh, you've eliminated the biological diversity that's really what makes a forest a forest. The Cove Mallard timber sales are being subsidized by you, the U.S. taxpayer. Like so many others in the Northern Rockies, these are below cost or deficit timber sales. U.S. taxpayers will lose $6 million to destroy the biggest and best native forests left in the continental United States. Cove Mallard is the beginning of the end for unprotected roadless areas and the forests and wildlife they harbor. Without your help, virtually every roadless forest in the greater Salmon Selway ecosystem is doomed. Bedded in the paper today, we'll sacrifice the birds for someone's job and
causing mass extinction while doctors use machines on human life to prolong. Someone's playing God, deciding who should be alive and who should not. Someone plays with fire, but you know he's only building his own if you roll Just do something to defend the earth. Defend the earth. Well, this is the edge of uh, the 20 acres that we bought. We're in the National Forest part of it right now and uh, as you can see in spite of the fact that this is lodgepole pine country there's some pretty big trees around here and the ancient forest bus brigade uh, is here for one reason and one reason only and that's to keep them from chopping into this area which is the uh, salmon subway ecosystem last summer forest activists from around the country converged on land bought by the Ancient Forest Bus Brigade within the Cove Mallard timber sales. Our 20-acre inholding shall be a welcome center where activists can learn about environmental issues and study the philosophy and principles of nonviolence. There will be a core group that stays on the land to create and maintain an infrastructure for the education of concerned citizens about the ecology, background, and politics of Cove Mallard and other roadless areas. What we have is a community that encompasses a number of talents and a number of highly educated people. We all have our areas of expertise. I am a nonviolence trainer. I give trainings in nonviolence and peacekeeping, and I do individual counseling. I have a lot of experience in nonviolent campaigns. People come to me to help get oriented in camp, to find their niche, to get plugged in, to get going. We also are planning to do some restoration work around here. It's an old, it's an, it's an old mine site from the Comstock mine back in the 20s. And so there's a lot of tree planting and some restoration work that could be done. And we want folks that would be willing to give a hand in that. Um, a lot of uh, gardening, just normal home setting stuff. We need help doing that. People want to come out to have building skills. You know, we'd love to see you come around. And we also want to try and network and get together so people can take back to their bioregions, you know, some of the things that we're learning here and some of the things that we're trying here. I think that maybe the most important metaphor that might help you grasp this is that people come in and they go out in the woods and some of them have never been out here before. They've got their map, they've got their compass, but what they really need is a guide. So there's somebody who walks in front and guides you through your first bushwhack. In this community, we try to live without a hierarchy. We try to live with total respect for one another, and we look to one another for guidance. Cove and Mallard are the first major roadless areas to be opened up in the northern Rockies. While many other roadless areas have been chipped away and encroached upon, the scale of the Cove Mallard project is unprecedented. For this reason, the Cove Mallard campaign has evolved into a sustained, 
activist-oriented effort to protect the big wild from Forest Service policies and practices. While logging in the Pacific Northwest has been curtailed to protect the northern spotted owl and other old growth dependent species, the Clinton administration is looking to the northern Rockies to make up for the timber shortfall. Forest Service Chief Jack Ward Thomas has emphasized the agency's commitment to timber production in the northern Rockies. Referring to Cove Mallard, Thomas stated, it's in the forest plan and we're going in. We will fight City Hall to save residential neighborhoods when they are slated for destruction to be replaced by a superhighway. And we must fight the U.S. Forest Service all the way to Washington, D.C. to save our wilderness neighborhoods. 95% of original forest cover in the lower 48 states is gone. 5% remains and only 1% is protected. The 15 and a half million acres of native forest in Montana and Idaho managed by the U.S. Forest Service represent the bulk of what's left to protect. Currently, Representative Pat Williams of Montana and Representative Larry LaRocco of Idaho have so-called wilderness bills pending in Congress, which would road and clear cut the best habitat in the region. What is needed is a comprehensive, multi-state, ecosystem-based wilderness bill. The Cove Mallard Coalition supports NARIPA, the Northern Rockies Ecosystem Protection Act, a visionary proposal which recognizes the roadless areas as the building blocks for ecosystem recovery and native forest protection. One of the strategies of a number of different conservation groups, of course, is, is to protect these core ecosystems in, in chunks that are big enough to support uh, sizable populations of large, wide-ranging mammals, particularly the big predators and, and the big omnivores. There's still a lot left. There's still a lot left that can be saved. There's a lot of country, a lot of areas in the Salmon Selway that can be restored. Here's our best chance in temperate North America to have real wilderness with all of its life. The Idaho Sporting Congress took the Forest Service to court over Cove Mallard and recently won a temporary injunction shutting down logging and road building. Despite this reprieve, forest activists in Cove Mallard now face new legal challenges. The Idaho State Legislature passed a law this spring, making it a felony offense to organize, to halt, impede, obstruct, or interfere with logging operations. The constitutionality of this law has yet to be tested, so we are asking for legal support this summer. Become part of our campaign. Join the Cove Mallard Coalition. There are a number of different ways to get involved. Public education, community organizing, restoration projects, biological surveys, and of course, heading into the backcountry to join the nonviolent direct action campaign. Some of the activities we have planned for this summer include an 80 mile march from Forest Service headquarters to the Grouse and Noble timber sales, guided tours inside Cove Mallard, and International Wild Rockies Wilderness Day in August. The time for compromise is over. The Forest Service is playing God with our forests, our wildlife, our water, and our well-being. So don't just sit there this summer. Come to Idaho and defend the big wild. Hey, 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 hey. Through many windows in the soul, you'll see aboriginality. This place was being built for a century. Forest Service is basically an outlaw agency with only one rule in mind, and that's to get the cut out, no matter what the cost. We've got to stop them here in Cove Mallard if we stop them anywhere, and we've got to protect the greater Salmon Selway ecosystem. To find you is to reclaim destiny. We must travel between the world. Without you, there is great loneliness. Nowhere to live, nowhere for to It's the last biggest wilderness left. To save. There's none, none as big as this in the lower 48 states left. Hmm. Grizzlies logging upright. Grizzlies logging upright.
think we can have salmon back. We can have wild salmon runs back, but we're going to have to begin thinking in terms of, of taking away, of taking out some of the dams, of dismantling some of these dams and, and restoring river habitat. And we're going to have to restore a lot of the high country habitat, the spawning beds that have been smothered by silt due to excessive logging and road building in, in parts of the ecosystem.